Okay, just a few people trying to get in, so hold on just a minute. All right, so you can hear me, right? Great, okay. So first thing, how was the test? Any comments or any question? Well, I'll get into detail, but if you have any questions. Um, I, I just started grading this morning, so hopefully I can finish up a couple of days. Hopefully by tomorrow. All right, so all right, Adam. Again, uh, do you have any questions about the tests? Not the details, but you know, any general questions. Or uh, having difficulty to joining in Proctor U because it's I think it was a pretty busy weekend last time. So yeah, I know it's a kind of hectic because some weekend, especially weekend, they, they're very busy. So probably hard to get it in schedule. So that, that's why I'm uh, emphasizing again: you need to schedule the tests as early as possible so that you don't want to you know wait too long or you don't get uh the time you want so okay so today i think i'm going to take a look at the test itself so that i can go over stuff at the same time you can ask me any questions so let me share my screen in just a second There we go. Well, this is the, a, I just select the random one. Hopefully it doesn't bother, you know, but uh, so that I can kind of show you. So first few steps, just, you know, identify yourself, enter your name and creating new sheets, which is a, not new sheets, but rename the sheets, right? Yeah. So you make it as a June. Then you enter, I think it's at the end, the last step, but you still have to enter your name in the header. So I'm not going to go through, uh, you know, in the order up here in the test, but I'm going to just go over whatever from the top, you know, go to the bottom and, and so forth. Let me maximize a little bit. All right, so the calculation, I think that's the uh, more important than other skills. As you can see, amount changed, meaning that change from January to February, February to March, and so forth, so that's the amount. So this amount, which is K6, is different from January to February. So that's why we are doing subtracting J6. We're doing J6 minus J5 so that you get the amount, whether it's positive or negative. Then all you do is just autofill all the way down, right? So that's the column K. The next calculation is finding percentage of this particular number. So you found just amount changed. Now we want to see the percentage of this number, right? From the previous, previous month, which is in this case, February. 
This is for February, so that's from June to February and February to June. That's why we're trying to find it here, percent change. So you take K6, which is just the amount you found, then divide by J5, which is a January's amount. So that's why you get K6 over J5. And again, all you do is just autofill all the way down, and you get those numbers for percent. Now, of course, this percentage, you need to change it to percent style and make it to decimal places depending on how many decimal places you have. Okay, so that's how, how you get column L. Then other calculation, let's see. Uh, sum, right? That was, it's column J, you're finding sum, right, for each month. So that's how you get column J. Then at the bottom you have average, not actually bottom, there's uh, row number 18. That's average for each uh, department. Okay, so that's why you get uh, average across right here. All right, so if you have any questions, you can stop me. And at the bottom section, which is almost the same structure, so all you do is just well, copy and paste the same calculation from the top, J, K, L, okay. Then here comes the running total, which is just adding column J's amount. So we have total for each month that we want to add, keep adding this amount as you move down to December. So that's the idea of column M here. There are a few ways to do it. Actually, you can do it manually, like a adding J6, I mean, in for oh, M6. For M6, adding J5, J6. Same thing, M7, you're adding those three. You can do it manually. But the best way is just using the sum. But in this example, I think this particular case, what she did was just adding the total to the uh, particular month total, the previous total to do this month's total. So that's what she did. But she didn't use the sum function or any other, I mean, the other way to get this amount. So another way to do it is using the sum and adding J5 to J5. Then make it first term absolute, absolute self-reference. Okay, so that's the kind of textbook way to do it. And afterwards, you're going to just autofill. Then uh, you basically, you get the same amount for column N. And this is the uh, formula view using the sum. In this case, you, I mean, both of them are right. I, I'm going to grade both of them all right, but, uh, you know, if the question asks particular formula, like using the sum, using the uh, absolute self-reference, then this should be the correct answer. And if you, if you recall, the book used another way, right, which is just using probably easiest way.
you're going to highlight, right? Then you get this a quick analysis at the bottom. Once we highlight this area, then you look for totals. Then you look for running total with the arrow pointing to, in this example, to the right. So this would be the correct one to use in terms of um, quick analysis. So this is the running total. Then the total will appear at the right side of the current column. Then you're going to have the same answer. Any question about the uh, so far? We good? All right. Then uh, conditional formatting, right? For column K. So you highlight, then you go to conditional formatting, you go to highlight cell, then what was that for? That was above average. But anyway, that's all here, right? D depending on what you want, greater than, less than, between. And if you go to top and bottom rules, then you get top 10, bottom 10, percentage above average, below average, all that. So that's how you're going to go for this conditional formatting. And if you want to actually edit, if you want to change the existing conditional formatting, you just go to, like I did, go to conditional formatting, manage your rules. Then you select the rule, then you click edit. Then you can change the condition or whatever the results you want. Here too, we have manage rules. We have one condition for waiting, so you can edit. Or if you, if you want to delete, you can just delete it. And start over if you want it. Okay, so that was condition formatting. Then I think we have a little formatting like a merge and center, apply cell style. Apply cell style for different uh, colors, like uh, templates, send one or send two, depending on. It's right there. Then we have uh, merge and center for column A. Right, so if you just unmerge, then you, that's what you get. Then you highlight. The area you want to merge, then you go to merge and center. Then you still have to uh, align depending on how you want to show. So that's right there, align. Okay. And there's a merge and center. And I think last thing for this merge and center for column A is orientation so that you can change the, the angle of the, the world you want to show for the text down or different angles. It's right there. And actually if you did if you did it the unit sold, then you can apply this unit sold to the revenues. So you don't have to repeat the same step you did on Unit sold for all those formatting. All you do is just format painter. So you select the formatting you want to copy, then you click format painter right here. Then you brush onto wherever you want to apply to. So that's the quicker way to do it. 
so that was column A. I think that's pretty much covered for this worksheet. And the other worksheets, and this file doesn't show it, but what was the data generation? I think that was the name. Then uh, using your ID or random number, you enter six digit, right? So I want enter one, two, three, zero, 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 six digits. Then you're going to increase this amount by five. So you need to show that calculation with a formula. So what you're doing is equals, take that A2 plus five. And with this, you just scroll down all the way, right? 1,000. I think I went too far. That's fine. And that's the formula view. And actually, there's another way to do it in Excel to generate those numbers in different way. Okay, so let's say I want to do, let's say I want to go to Data tab. Then uh, you go to uh, I think my toolbar is kind of. limited here. Oh, it was not data. It was Home tab. Home tab, then you go to Fill. Then you click Series. Again, that's Home tab. Fill. Series. So what it do is you, it'll fill out those uh, columns or rows the way you want to do it. For in this example, this tab value is the value how much you want to increase for linearly growing right here. Or you can do the growth, you can do the date, you can do the autofill, but let's say this is, let's do the same thing, like uh, increase by five, then you enter five. Then uh, when you want to stop, when you want to stop, the value reaches at, let's say, uh, 1 million, right? That's what the Excel will do. It will increase by 5, then it will stop when the number reaches at 1 million. And let's do it. Because I selected row, then it will go to the, all the way to the right until it reaches the 1 million. But you can always change it to columns if you want to the columns. So I'm going to change it to columns. Five and one million. Alright, so that's the kind of similar way to do it. Again using series. All right, so that's the the second part, which is uh, generating generating a, a number of cells. Oh, I think there's a little detail, right? Uh, what was that? Showing this uh, worksheets, this particular sheets. Uh, one page by one. The region is, for example, sometimes if you just don't do it, then you try to print. It's the print preview. Then you could have like uh, so many pages. So I, just, I have like five 5,000 pages, okay, for example. But you can control this. Just 
put everything into one by one, one page by one page. And let's see, print, print preview. I think it didn't do it right here. Okay. I don't, I don't know whether you can make it because it's like a, some, so many uh, columns. I don't think it's going to make it by one by one physically, but that's the idea. You can just change the uh, orientation of uh, active sheets, okay, so that you can put everything into uh, one page, even though you have so many pages. And you have orientation, portrait, landscape. All right, so I think that's it. For Can you go over how to do the running totals again? I panicked sure. and forgot right. the formula. <laughs> All right, no problem. So that's a column J, so we're trying to find the running total. And so two different ways, column M and column N. It give you the same answer. They both of them give you the same answer, but first the column M is just doing manually, right? Uh, not using some function. Okay. So in the textbook, they show this way, column N using sum, adding the first uh, cell by itself, then next cell, adding first cell to second cell, next adding first cell to third cell. So you keep adding just like that. And at the bottom, then you get the, uh, uh, the last uh, running total amount. Okay, any other questions? Uh, how long do you think they have the grade? Hopefully I can finish by tomorrow. Anything else? We good? All right. Any other questions about assignments or anything? Let me know. Okay, so again, you know, so Module 3, Module 4, I think Module 5, Module 6 is getting a little bit tougher. But uh, if you have any questions, just don't stick to one problem. Just let me know first so that I can help you, okay? All right, then. Uh, if you don't have any questions, we'll see you next week and have a, we have a, 4th of July, right? That's the next week, okay. All right, so we'll see you next time, okay? Thank you, have a good evening. Okay, you too, thank you.